Coach, just your th initial thoughts on the matchup. I know you said on stage you have a game. Yeah, I mean, we're excited. You know, no, no matter who you play in the NCAA tournament, it's going to be a – you know, it's going to be a team that's playing well, and, and they're very deserving. So, you know, Munz and I go back a long way, but, you know, we're both professionals. So, you know, I mean, we're going to both get, prepare our teams the best we can this week and uh, look forward to go out there and competing. Can you tell the story of how he gave you your start? Yeah, I mean, I was, uh, you know, he recruited me a little bit when I played at Walla Walla Community College, but I wasn't good enough. And he gave me the standard line. Uh, he was an assistant at Gonzaga at the time. And he said, if you ever want to get into coaching, uh, give me a call. So when I got done playing, I gave him a call. And he gave me uh, my first chance, but I went over to Europe in Germany to play one more year. And, um, and while I was gone, they had that first magical run at Gonzaga in the Elite Eight. And then he got the Minnesota job, and I kind of got passed on to Mark Few. So that, that's the story. What does that mean to you that, that he saw that in Europe? Um, you know, I, I, mean, I mean, let's not give Munz too much credit. I mean, he probably said that to a lot of people. It was an easy way to let a kid off the hook when you weren't going to offer him a scholarship. I'm just joking, but uh, it means a lot. I mean, he's a great family friend, and he's a really good man, and, he, and, he, and he's one of the funnest people that I know. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean I, I'm proud to be part of that coaching tree, and, and he's obviously at the very top of it. You That's guys are a bizarre obviously coming off a, a, a loss, but where, what do you feel about the, the direction or the place that you guys are in now coming into this game? Yeah, I feel good. I feel good. You know, um, you know hey, at the end of the year, you're going to play hard games, and, and you know, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. We've been fortunate uh, to win some of those games and you know then you get in the tournament and you lose one so you know we're playing the hand we're dealt i, I think we're well rested i know we're definitely healthier than we were last year um so you know we, I, I think we're ready to be in attack mode i mean we're ready to have a good week of preparation and and go out and play a good long beach state team and and let it happen you kind of laugh you know fusion salt lake also so to be you did yeah i saw that i mean i, I was literally worried that it was going to be yeah. that it was, on the 710 line it was going to be him and call him and boise state which is, you know, Mark Few and, and Leon Rice, and we were all kind of together. Obviously, we're all together at Gonzaga at the same time, and um, I was just hoping that that wouldn't happen, so thank goodness that didn't happen. But that's a bizarre story that he's quasi-dismissed and then wins his tournament for the automatic bid. What do you think of this? Well, I mean, I mean, Munz is a great leader, and so I think he has an ability to rally his troops, and, and I'm sure they're playing spirited basketball right now. I mean, it's not the first time his team has made a noise in the postseason or a conference tournament. So, you know, that's what good coaches do, and we're, we're going to play against a very good coach who's got a lot of experience and in a program that's, you know, that's used to winning games. What are, your message, what are your conversations with Caleb Love and Kylan Boswell like this week after their kind of sluggish last week? Um, you know, hey, we're, 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 it's tournament time. So we, we trust them. We believe in them. There's no pressure on them. They don't need to do anything, you know, other than what they've done consistently for the most part all season. So, you know, that, that's how games go. That's how seasons go. You lose games. And, and usually when you lose games, you know, some guys don't play well. So, you know, we, we just got to get them back on track. But it's, it's nothing that I'm, I'm really stressed out or losing sleep about. People are going to bring up last year a lot this week with the yeah. and all that. How do you kind of block that out? Well, last year is last year. I mean, we've never denied it. We've owned it. You know, I mean, it's part of our history, part of our legacy. And, you know, when you're at a program like Arizona, you, you, you're you going to have great successes and you're also going to have some things that look like monumental failures. It just, it's just how, how it goes. And so, you know, we've never avoided it all year. We talk about it. We, we openly acknowledge it in our program. We're not embarrassed about it. So, you know, we're looking forward to another opportunity this year, and, and this team's journey is different than last year's journey. So, you know, we're excited to get out there and, 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 and play, uh, play, play Thursday. So you actually, you actually never worked with Monson on the staff? No, I never worked with him, no, no. But I've been with him enough, and obviously there's enough crossover there. I mean, our, our families are friends, our wives are friends, our kids are on group chats together. I mean, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's... It's probably about as close as you could be in this coaching business. Yeah. But, but your, your, your coach at Walla Walla recommended you to him or something? Or you, yeah, I mean, I think so. I mean, back in the time, you know, I mean, Gonzaga was still recruiting Juco players, and I had a good year. They came and looked at me, but, you know, good for them. They found somebody better. So they didn't have to take me. I mean, that's, that's probably why they did so well, you know, and, and that's probably why I'm here right now, because they did so well, and I was able to hitch my wagon to Gonzaga as a coach. So um, things work out. So, do you feel, was he kind of, do you look at him as kind of like the, the guy who kind of got the ball rolling there at Gonzaga? I mean, he's a big part of it. I mean, I think you, you got to go back to Dan Fitzgerald. You know, he was the original, and, and Dan Fitzgerald, you know, worked, you know, when he was the head coach there. Uh, Dan, uh, Fuey, and Billy Greer were his assistants. And then, you know, 
then Fitzy retires, Munns takes over. I think his second year here, they have the, the run, and then Mark becomes the head coach. So he's at the center of everything, for sure. I mean, he's the, he's the central figure, if not the central figure in the whole thing. When you were at Gonzaga, win or lose, you were already done several days before yeah. the announcement and all that and kind of reset. How much more of an advantage is it? I know it's not the same amount, but just having an extra day. Well, I mean, it's a lot. I mean, I think it's a lot. I mean, listen, I'm, I'm being honest with you. I'm not joking. I'm so much more well-rested right now standing here than I was the last two years. You know, the last two years, you're you're coming here, you know, on adrenaline and fumes, and then you just try to, you know, rally back your energy. And I know other teams do it, but it's just not easy for anybody. So so to be able to have a full day to recover and, and you know, and, and then yesterday, and then a day to relax today and, and then kind of figure out what we're going and we'll build it as a normal week starting tomorrow. I apologize to ask this again. Our battery died. Could you just recount the story again? He came to you when you were playing at Walla Walla. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, Coach Munson and I met when I, when I was playing at Walla Walla Community College. He was recruiting me. And, uh, you know, and, and, and fortunately for him, he found a better player. And, you know, I mean, kind of to let me down easy in the recruitment, he told me, if I ever wanted to get into coaching, to uh, give him a call. And he probably told a lot of people that, but I didn't forget it. And, and at the end of my uh, you know, playing career, you know, through my junior college coach, Jeff Rhineland, um, you know, we reached out to Coach Munson and he gave me an opportunity to come up there and be a GA. And, and so that, that, that's how it started. He kind of gave me my first shot in the, in the business. Thank you. Do you think that, I mean, is there similarities in what he does to what you do? What, what you I mean, do? I, I mean, I mean, so, listen, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think, I mean, we never coached together, you know, and, and uh, you know, we've been, you know, I mean, on different paths, you know, different programs for, you know, 25 years. So, you know, I mean, may maybe we'll see some, I don't know. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, I'm sure, you know, he'll run his, his, his classic play Crackdown. You know, it was an old Gonzaga staple uh, from back in the day that I think he still runs. We don't really run it much, but, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think there'll be fun things like that that I'll find out this week. To be honest with you, I haven't watched his team play that much. So, I mean, you know, I mean, you're, you're pretty focused on your team and your, your upcoming opponents. So, I, I mean, I'm going to actually probably enjoy sitting down and watching his, his team play the next few days. How does it feel on some level to know, okay, he's been fired whenever they end. If you win, that's the end of his time. I mean, listen, I'm, I'm, hey, I got, an, I got a job. My, and my job is to, to lead the Arizona basketball program. And, and so that, that, that's a, where 100% of my effort and energy is. And he has a job. He still has a job, even though he doesn't maybe going forward there, but he's going to coach again somewhere. And, you know, and I'm sure they're going to use it as a rallying point for their program to, to see if they can play one more. Is there any advice that you have to the newcomers whose first NCAA tournament this will be? Enjoy it and, and let it rip. And they know that you're playing in a meaningful um, event, you know, that kind of captivates a nation and, and, and bring your swag, bring your energy and, and you know, and, and, and throw haymakers. I mean, that's how we're going to come out. We're all going to go home and analyze the heck out of this matchup and all that. But how much of this is just about you guys and how you play? I mean, I, I think at the end of the day, always this time of year, you know, the first thing you got to, you got to, you know, you got to do is you got to do what you do well. And, you know, you got to, it's going to be a short prep on a team you haven't played. They haven't played you. And, you know, you, you got to come. You, you got to do the things you do well and, and focus on that this week because that's the number one thing. I mean, you're not going to drastically change what you do. What, do you, what did you think of it? I mean, in general, I know you don't look too far ahead, but like they're talking on the commentary, well, perfect path for Arizona, Final Fours in Arizona. I mean, I mean, I mean, that's great for you guys, and, and, I, and, and I, I, you guys get to analyze that. I don't. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't even know the other half of the Pac-12 bracket this week. You know, so I, I knew who we would play next, and and and, and I was trying to keep I, I keep it that simple, and that's just, that's that's a, a better space for me to be in as a coach for my program. How do you keep the players from looking too far ahead themselves as well? Keep your similar mindset. Well, I mean, we we talk to them about it, and, and and I always believe you know if they're and it's hard, it's hard because there's a lot of outside noise, but if if they're more attracted and captivated by the outside noise, maybe we're not doing a good enough job internally in our program on you know, bringing things back home. And, and, and we're a program that takes a ton of pride in our culture. And, you know, we know we're not perfect, but, but we work on it on a daily basis. And there's not a perfect culture in the world. But, uh, but I know ours is healthy and strong. And, and so I, I think our guys will be locked in. Now that it's officially March, how important is it now this year having players like Caleb and Shad who've made it far in March? Is that something that you attribute to anything when you? Well, I mean, I mean, I, I guess it's nice to have guys that have been there, done that. I mean, they're, 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 you know, there's some comfort in that. But at the end of the day, been there, does that doesn't guarantee anything. You know, you got to come out Thursday. It's, it's a one-game season. 
and and you got to play you got to play well to earn the right to get the second game. Tom, how, how do you feel like um, you said you're rested? I mean, you said something I think last week that once the Pac-12 tournament comes, you can't really work on getting better. Do you feel like you have a, a you know a little moment, especially because you know the problems again you had offensively? Yeah, I week. mean, you know, I mean, we, we 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 yeah, we'll definitely look at some stuff this week, but nothing crazy. I mean, it, it'll you know we'll. Well, you know, I mean, I'm sure a lot of it's cleaning up things we normally do and just kind of, you know, you know, recentering ourselves on, you know, what our values are and our identity. And then and then, you know, you, you look at your opponent and figure out the, the best way you need to attack them. I mean, that'll be our focus this week. It won't be anything, anything drastic. How, how is Kylan holding up? And are, are you were you aware of that photo? That's been circulating? Yeah, no, no, we're, 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 we're aware of it. And um, and we've handled it internally. And that's all I got to say about that. You know, we got a strong culture. And, you know, but, but again, I say we're not perfect, but, you know, we love Kylan and, you know, I, I have no worries moving forward. Yeah, I was just wondering if it affected him or the team. Not, no, you know, I mean, as, no. Yeah. And how about Caleb, too, just the, the kind of, I mean, you know, he, yeah, he just didn't play well. I mean, he's had a great season, just didn't play well the last couple of games. And, you know, we can't overthink it. You know, I mean, we don't need to make a mountain out of a molehill. He's a great basketball player. He just needs to get out there and, and play well on Thursday. Yeah. A lot of times fans will say, like, I'm glad we got the stinker out of the way. Like, that, in, in a way, like, that you guys played poorly is almost yeah. beneficial. Are you, do you yeah. buy that at all? Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you, you, I mean, fans justify things a lot of ways. That, that, and, and that's what's cool about being a fan is you get an opinion and you get a voice with your friends, you know. But, I mean, those things don't really penetrate us. And, you know, we would have loved to play better. And, you know, we would have loved to win the Pac-12 tournament. But we didn't. So, you know, we got to play the hand we're dealt. And the hand we're dealt now is, you know, getting rested and re-energized and, and, and heading up to Salt Lake to play Long Beach. I mean, we're not overthinking it anything more than that. Is there anything to that in terms of, you know, not winning the tournament? You see maybe some things that you need to fix and instead of winning it, and, you know. Just I, mean, yeah, I mean, you hope so. Like I said, you play the hand you're dealt. And as things show up, you know, you address them. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at some of that stuff. And we already have as a staff. I mean, we're, we're locked and loaded. We just need to kind of take a look at Long Beach State and figure out how, you know, how that looks against us. And, and then we'll make some decisions on what we want to do. Have you had, you know, when you, you guys do keep in touch, I mean, have you, over the years, have you talked to Dan about just the challenges there? I mean, that's a hard place to get it going. Well, so, I mean, it, he, what, he's also had a lot of success there. You know, he's yeah. also had a lot of success. And it, it, maybe it's a hard place to win consistently every year, but he's done, a, he's done an admirable job. I mean, 17 years at a place like Long Beach State, that... That says something about your staying power. You know, the, the only complaint I have about Munns is we shouldn't be playing this game because he and I had agreed this year to play a guarantee game. Not really. We had agreed. I was down in Mexico. I remember exactly where I was at when we agreed. And, and then I get back, you know, and a, a couple weeks later, I check in with TJ, like, hey, did uh, we get that deal done with Munns, that contract? And, and in the meantime, they found someone else. So we were supposed to play this year. And without months telling me, he canceled it, took someone else, and if he had we had played, we wouldn't have matched up against him. So this is Munz's fault. Well, that, that's interesting because, like Gonzaga, you don't really seem to want to play them because like, that you. Yeah, I mean, listen, guys, I, I don't think you guys all understand how close we are. Yeah. I mean, we're 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 a family, yeah. and that doesn't mean we're not professionals and not on our own paths, but we're literally a family, and, and it's a very unique situation. I mean, our kids are more like cousins than friends. And, you know, our wives are best friends. Us coaches have been in the battles together. We're great friends. So, I mean, I, I, I think the relationships run that deep. And you guys obviously don't see it publicly because we, we're not doing it publicly. I mean, it's all privately and, and, and you know, and so, yeah. How, how do you feel just overall this, uh, the three teams you've had here uh, entering the tournament, do you feel like you're a little more versatile and maybe more equipped to go different I mean, directions? I, I, feel, I mean, I, I really like this team. I mean, this team's capable of of winning games in March and, and, and that's the ultimate goal when you put it together is to be able to win games in March. I, I feel like we're capable of that but me feeling we're capable doesn't guarantee anything. Now you got to go out and do it. Um, I definitely feel like we're healthier this year than maybe we have been the past couple years um, especially last year. So so I mean I I mean I'm taking that as a positive. Yeah. And then we've talked about this before this year but just Keyshawn and, and Caleb do this experience yeah. they've had. How much now that the tournament's here how much you think that well, you know, I think it means a lot. Right? I think it means a lot. I think they can send a great message to your team about, you know, you know what what it takes in this tournament, and and 
and you know what their teams went through and you know every, every tournament run even if you do make a deep run it's not without some struggle and some adversity and and how you stay the course to overcome that i mean i, th I think it'll be something uh it'll be a great asset to us